Stavros Katsaneves is a teacher in astrophysics in Paris and his main field of research is the connection between astrophysics and physics of particles, subatomic particles. So maybe he can explain us this new field of research. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> you see, we know that the universe started for a, from a very high density of energy. Actually, the whole universe that we're living, we see around us, it was ap approximately 15 billion years ago, had the dimensions of subatomic particle. Very, very small. But if you know this, you understand that when you understand well the subatomic particle, you also understand the history of the universe. Because the history of the universe is, it passed through all, all the phases that we call nuclear physics, atomic physics, and subatomic physics. So based on this, they developed a, a new uh, domain of physics, it's, I would say, although it existed in different forms uh, uh, for many, many years, you can even say it was a hundred years, institutionally it took its form approximately 20 years ago. And what are we doing with this? We try, first of all, to extend astronomy. Astronomy up to now has been by the light we have from the stars and also through the radio waves that used to come from the stars. We try to use all kinds of particles, charged particles, neutrinos. We try also to use gravitational waves, that is, each time there is a violent phenomenon in the universe, there are, the collision is so strong that the whole universe palpitates, makes waves, as we have waves in the sea, and this we try to detect. We also make archaeology of this universe. We try to study in places like Gran Sasso, in, uh, in, uh, which is the biggest European and the world lab, I would say, these days, compared to the Japanese one, Kamioka. We try to uh, study very rare phenomena because the fact that they are rare means we, that with them we can make the archaeology of the universe. We can see what happened back there. Third, we look big surveys, at this time they are astronomical surveys of the universe and try to detect where is dark matter and where, where is dark energy. All this therefore makes the field that we call astroparticle physics and tries to relate the infinitely small, which is what happens below the nucleus, beyond, inside and much below the nucleus, and the infinitely large, which is the universe, the observable universe we are living in. And this is what I have been doing in the last, uh, say, 20 years. Thank you. And uh, it's very interesting uh, what you told about gravitational waves. Uh, in uh, how many years do uh, you think it will be possible to have uh, evidence of the, of the existence of these uh, waves? Uh, for Higgs uh, boson, we, we need the, the many, many years. So about this uh, subject? I, here, I, it is the next big revolution. This is the next big revolution we are waiting for. We worked, I worked for many years in here in Kashina. This is another big Italian lab. You should know there are two world class uh, 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 laboratories of astroparticle physics. I don't want to compare with other domains that are really very, very important in the world. And one is, as I told you, Gran Sasso, the underground laboratory of Gran Sasso in L'Aquila. And the other is the Virgo gravitational wave detector, which is in Kashina, in Pisa. So there, we are very excited because we wait the first detection between 2016 and 2018. 2016 is the date that uh, Einstein discovered general relativity. So we hope to give him his, a present for his 100 years to discover uh, gravitational waves. We think that they are inescapable, that we'll see it. If we, for some reason we don't see it, it may be that 
either general relativity is more complicated than we thought, or probably we made some well, some assumptions about astrophysical uh, uh, parameters that were not correct. But it is very very difficult not to detect it. I would I would personally be ready to bet uh, a few bottles of spumante that we will detect it. Uh, in your speech, uh, you always uh, quote uh, uh, ancient uh, Greek philosopher. It's not only because you are a Greek uh, scientist, but uh, I think there is a more deep uh, significance in this. Can you explain us? Yes, because I think that uh, what happened there, because it was the beginning of rational thinking, they had uh, a few options on how the reality is, of what reality is made of. And of course they had absolutely no means to, to know what is the truth or what, where. but simply by logic, by simply contradicting one another, by when one was taking one position, the other was taking the opposite position, they covered the possibilities of the different entities we can find in the and we fall, whatever we do, we fall in some way in some of the solutions they thought. Not that they were ingenious because they thought they couldn't be, they couldn't be in the position that we are here uh, now, but somehow, simply by logic, by simply exploring the possibilities of language and mathematics they found solutions that we now uh, find and we see, oh, it's this solution or not. So it's interesting to see how it is explained in language, because the language of physics, as Galileo said, is mathematics, of nature, is mathematics. And there we have, pe we have people that formulated very nice metaphors of what is reality and what is under the reality and what is the universe and all that. And a friend of us said it not to me, to a very good Greek physicist, uh, joking to him. He said, uh, you started it all, now you have to finish it, in the sense. <laughs> but I don't believe that it was, I'm not, it's not for me a story of pride. That they, it, was, it was the freshness of the thing, that it was fresh. And the first time they thought that we have to explain everything based on a few principles. And this gave uh, this uh, profusion of theories that we still can, uh, can uh, talk about. Thank you very much, Professor Gatsanevas. Thank you a lot.